Well, as soon as Derek comes, you can get off. Maybe you won't turn up. Unless you can see round corners, you're wasting your time. What do you mean? Well, go in there and have a look. Couldn't care less what Jimmy Corkle's selling. <sighs> Actually, I thought we'd have sold a few more of these by now. Too expensive. Never seen cards so dear as they are these days. These are expensive. I'll stick to selling what you know. Hey, I can flog anything, me. It's getting the punters in, that's the problem. I haven't seen many of these buckets and spades being sold. Oh, well, that's where you're wrong, isn't it, eh? Because I sold a set yesterday. Oh, yeah. And was it worth making the place look a mess after one sale? Hey, this place looks like Arad's compared to that I saw next door. I like those lights out there. Uh, just decoration, aren't they? Should have had some proper security like Morning. Oh, Farrell. I thought you might have been earlier this morning. Punctuality is a very important part of the retail business, you know. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. Uh, the buses were full of school kids. Uh, the journey took longer than I thought. Yeah, there's something you could do, teach. Oh, yeah. Better than working in a shop. Oh, yeah? And what's wrong with working in a shop? Nothing for you. Look, dear, it won't be forever. Just a couple of weeks while Jackie Corkle's on holiday. Yeah, I know. What are people going to say when they see you working in a shop? Probably say, hey, didn't you bury my ma in law and shake his hand? <laughs> you know what I mean. Hey, the lad needs something to keep himself busy, doesn't he? And I could do with the help. We've got competition from next door, remember? I don't want me taking the plummet because of that cowboy cork hill. Morning, campers. Hey, Jimmy's doing a road and trade next door. You want to see it? The place is chocky. What sort of stuff's he selling then? Oh, well, all sorts, you know, prayer mats, dog collars. You name it, he flogs it. Have you come in to buy something? Yeah, the loaf and that. Yeah, well, it's over there, isn't it? Tell you what, I wish I was back out in the open road again with the Moby. You will be when Jackie Coco gets back. It's great, though, you know. Seeing all my old all right. customers again. Oh, stop complaining. Go make us a cup of tea before we go back to work. Hey, make any news on this school business, then? No, not yet. Hey, listen, uh, I never did thank you and Margaret for getting along to the meeting. It made all the difference I can support you. Oh, well, you know, pleased to help. <laughs> and look, um, I know I didn't see eye to eye over you and Margaret, but. Best of luck, anyway. Yeah, well, you know, I suppose it's I all right. tell you what, Jimmy's selling some crack and stuff in that shop. You know, he's got kecks and everything. I do with some new stuff myself. Oh, well, you'll be all right, won't you? None of it's black stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Something for me, anyway. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Milton not been then, Mick? Yeah, it's just that it's the start of the uh, school campaign today, you see. Well, all the parents are going to keep the kids off school, so I'll have to take a bit of time off, you know, with mine being at home. So it's loads of coffee for me, keep me alert. Oh, come on, Ron, it's a principle, isn't it? Big principles. Anyway, you better get some orange or something for the kids, haven't you? Good thinking, mate. Hey, um, is there any chance of me nipping next door to see if I can pick up a few bargains, eh? What, to Jimmy's? Yeah, go on. And take your time. Oh, cheers. It won't be long. Hey, I'm his boss. It's our shop. Anyway, look, do you reckon you could hold the fort here for a couple of minutes while I nip next door, see what he's flogging? Just out of interest, that's oh, all. Yeah. Table to Jay Corkin, love. OK. You can bungle in your accounts. Have you got this in a meeting? Uh, yeah, should have. Try under the counter. Yeah, look. Eh, seen anything you like? Yeah, I've just wondered about this. Mm -hmm. Oh, I. Hey, listen, I'll tell you what. Uh, you go down to those fancy shops in town, you know, you'll be paying well over the odds for them. Just the sort of thing that the Liverpool footy team are wearing, you know. Ah, I'm an Evertonian. Oh, I. <laughs> Never mind. You get cured for that in Lewis, can't you? <laughs> there you go, look. Now, listen, tell all your friends, won't you, they? See you next time. Ta-da. All right, Ron. Hiya, Ron. Hey, listen, uh, you can do your tracky bottoms to go with them, you know. He doesn't want tracky bottoms. He wants to make a bit more dignified. Well, you have to look. Flip flops, is it? All right, Jackie. Didn't expect to see you here. When you're old. After a bargain, are you? If you're not, Ronnie, come to the right place, kid. Hey, what's this? Pencils. I sell pencils, you know. Oh, yeah. But they're not as cheap as that. Hey, Jimmy, any chance of a piece of Holy Ghost? Yeah, go ahead. If you make it yourself. No. Oh, I should have started with round, really. I'll make you some toast in a minute. Oh, cool. I sell biros as well, you know. Hello, Trace, love. What can I get you, kid? Just thought you'd have a nose round again. Oh, I ain't. I'll tell you what. It's going better than anyone ever thought, you know. I'm surprised anyone's in. Well, then. Quality, style and attractive prices. That's what's doing it, I'm telling you. Oh, uh, <laughs> take this one, please. All oh, right, nice one. Now, listen, I'll tell you what. Seeing as you're a man of the cloth, right, if you take two, I'll throw in the third one half price. Now, I can't say fairer than that, can I? That'll be fine. <laughs> OK, your loss. 
Uh, six notes, Reverend. Cheers, Tom. Any news on the uh, job front yet, Tracy? Can't say I've looked at her yet. Mm. See you, Dexy. Haven't you two got any sense? That lad's just gone through a personal crisis. All right, Jack, we all have them, you know. Yes. Well, he's just coming to terms with his. Why, what's up? He's a defrocked priest. The fellow who just bought the T-shirt. Mm. Uh, excuse me, but he has not been defrocked, all right? He packed him being a priest of his own accord. He's getting his leg over with the Farnham's nanny as well. Do you mind? Hey, he is having a decent relationship with a nice girl, that's all. All right, well, sorry. Yeah, well, that's all right, isn't it? I could be a sound with my feet up instead of listening to you lot going on. That's what I thought you would be, actually, Jackie. Seems how you're on holiday for me, like. Ah, well, not every bloke who can get his message, you know, working for him. In our holidays, eh? Yeah, he must be getting something good out of it, Jack. He hasn't even worked out what it's going to cost him, yes. Just name your price, sweetheart. Right, yeah, we better get off then. Hey, Ronnie, listen, if you want me to get you any of those cheap pencils, you know, just give us a shout, eh? Yeah. So has anyone heard anything about Terry? Couldn't get any answer from his dad's, and I didn't fancy going to the police station. Well, no gossip from our rod then, no? Yeah, well, our rod's saying is that things are looking pretty grim for Terry. She wonder what's going on there, little lad, doesn't it? Whether she can hear us or what? Nurse reckons she's aware of all sorts of things. When's the doctor coming around? Sometime this morning. He spoke to me and Owen last night. Said they were going to change her antibiotics. See if they help. They will. Seems almost too much to hope for. Hey, she's a fighter, you know. Got the Rogers blood on her. Dad, the doctor said it's still touch and go. I'm not giving up hope. I can't. If this comes in here again, Lee, I'm going to take it off you. Where the protest is, isn't it? Yeah, of course. Come in, stay. Get one, bro. Sure. Come in. Oh. Their mums have had to go straight to work. They'll be back about four ish, and we should be back, say, five. All oh, right. Okay. So, um, the campaign's moved here, is it? Oh, well, I naturally assumed it had. So, are you all getting off now, then? Yeah, I got a salon full this morning, and some of the other mums had to nip out to do some shopping. Well, well, I never expected it all to fall on me, you know. Uh, well, not that I mind. I just thought that everyone would keep their kids at home. Oh, You'll manage. Look, uh, if it's going to cause any difficulties... Oh, not at all. Uh, if this is campaign HQ, then that's the way it is. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Wouldn't have it any other way. on Sunday. I sat on the top of Hell Velin. I had a good think about you and the missing Barry Grant. You've done very well, do you know that? You've done very well. Not a word out of you. But I'm getting bored, Terry. Yeah. I'm getting very bored. We could still stretch this to a murder inquiry. You could get life. But then again, you probably feel like you've been doing the life since you lost your wife and child and unborn baby. Hmm? And any judge in sentencing you would show compassion. 
you were stressed, you had an argument over something, you lost your temper. But you have to tell us where the body is, Terry. You have to tell us where the body is, you see. You see, hiding the body of a murder victim adds up to any one of a few things. Either it was a premeditated, and you had every intention of disposing of the body, or there was some psychopathic element in your behavior and you just flipped. And after shooting Valley Grant, you just panicked. And that's why you don't know where the body is. Or, something he said, something you didn't want to hear, maybe. Something about your wife. Something he knew about you, and then you just flew into a rage and you killed him, didn't you? Hmm? Didn't you? That's it, isn't it, Terry? Isn't it? He said something you couldn't cope with, didn't he? Clever as you think you are, are you, Sullivan? What do we want? We want our school. When do we want it? Now! Don't you think it's a bit much having your house turned into a crash? No, I wasn't expecting it, but uh, we had to do something, didn't we? Yeah, your problem is, bro, while you're leading revolution and civil protest, you're not making any money. Yeah, I know. What do we want? We want why don't you let me take the cab out for a couple of hours? Bring in a few bob at least. Look, the more times you take that cab out, the greater the risk of getting caught. No problem. If I get caught, well, I'm Mick Johnson. You can't tell one bleak from another anyway, boy. <laughs> Keys are on the side. Uh, and hey, take it easy with that. Hey! You know me. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm worried about. Right, Mr Sullivan, you can pick up your stuff from the desk sergeant. You are free to go. You are? You're free to go. You'll be charged with the illegal possession of a firearm. What's going on? Escort Mr. Sullivan to the desk, Sergeant, will you? <sighs> Just keep walking, Sullivan. I'm uh, helping the family out for a while. How's Sammy and the baby? Oh, Sammy's a lot better there. The baby, yeah, uh, still poorly, you know. I'm going to try some new drugs with her today and uh, fingers crossed she'll pick up. Well, I'll say a prayer for her. I'll be back in there later. You give her all regards? Yeah, sure. Anyway, right, thanks. See you. Right, see you. Hi. Oh, hi. Oh. Hello. Oh, have you got anything for a headache? Yeah, under there. You covering for Jackie while she sorts the new shop out? Eh, uh, well, uh, sort of. Uh, 86 pence, please. Great, thanks. Cheers. You're better ways of spending a holiday. Since never die. Two weeks on a beach you go down well. Eh, uh, wouldn't mind a nice long holiday myself. Yeah, south of France, somewhere like that. You went to France when I was at school. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Hey, Degs, you couldn't just move that stock to the end of the mall before us, could you, mate? Eh, uh, yeah, no problem. Thanks. How's it going, Anne? You all right? Fine, thanks. Just getting something for a headache. Oh, really? You do get a lot of headaches these days, don't you, love? Good value, them, you know. Oh, I'm just being nosy. I got one next door. Next door? He's not flogging cards as well now, is he? Yeah, he's got quite a good selection, actually. I don't know. You can't trust anybody these days, can you? You're not kidding. Barry Grant's gone missing and his mate's walking around the close with a gun. Dee, he wasn't walking around the close with it. Could have been. I'd better get going. Bye. To the orange. Could have been our back garden. Hey, Terry. All right, love. Nice to be out, eh? Sidewalking and that, you know. Uh, How much? 
wonder why they let him out. I wish I had the nerve to ask him. No doubt. All will be revealed in time. At the moment, I'm more interested in what's going on behind there. You couldn't have charged him with anything serious. Not much to see, like, is there? Hey? The Ordens. Oh, will you stop it? You put yourself in an early grave. Hey, Dee. If that does turn out to be a supermarket, it could well be the death of us all. I could open a string in these places. Just what people need in the recession. Yeah, you seem to be doing all right. Did you get a cheap rent on this place? Uh, I made an arrangement with Barry, you know, before he went away. Well, no one knows where he is or what's happened to him, so I suppose no one could argue with you. Hmm. Right, I think I'll make tracks. I want to get some meat in for today. All right, love. Anyway, listen. There is definitely something fishy about all this life with Teddy. I mean, I don't think the man's got it in him to kill anyone, let alone his best mate. If you could call Barry a mate of anyone's. All right, there's no need to talk about him like that. Seems to have done you all right with this place. Hi, love. Need any assistance? Well, it was Tracy, really. I just thought you should know Terry's just got back. Uh, no sign of Barry, is there? No. Did he say anything? No, he just went straight up to Barry's flat. I'll see you later. Yes, yeah. Oh, Tracy seems keen. <laughs> More like nosy. Mm. Definitely a cool killer. Hey, yeah, uh, Jackie. Hiya. I can what? <laughs> yeah. Listen, um, are you waiting in there? You know, uh, properly like. I know. You think I'd have had enough slaving for you, and now here I am punishing myself working with Jimmy in my holes. Yeah, but uh, well. I must admit, you know, I didn't expect to find you right in the as well. Where the world? One husband, two bosses. I'm cracking up. Yeah, but it's a bit odd, that was, isn't it? Like, that was, it was like moonlight, wasn't it? Um, it's a bit odd of having a priest selling ciggies and lemonade. Ah, yeah, but these family don't get it, can they? Well, husbands do count as family, you know. Do you know, I never thought it'd happen, but he needs me. Hey, listen. You, you, you will be coming back to work for us, won't you? I mean, I've only got Derek in there, so you finish your holidays, you know, and I have to keep taking the movie out. Oh, don't worry. Two weeks working with Jimmy will probably be enough. But then again, I suppose if you both want me, I might be in a good negotiating position for a rise off either of you. <laughs> See ya. Yeah. What's happened? Why did they let you go? I was sitting there. Ken came in, asking me about Sue, Danny, Graham, Curtis, guns, what I've done with the body, what went on the beach, and what Barry said. Terry, did you do it? Did you do what everyone's saying you've done? Ken came in this morning after grilling me. Then he let me go. I was gobsmacked. And when I was walking out, there he was. Who? Barry. He's alive. Like something out of a Hitchcock movie. I saw him, then gone. Well, where is he, Terry? What's going on? He wouldn't let me wait. I don't know what's happened. He's gone. I don't know where he is. Got the smellies for you. Thanks. Any change? The doctors came round before. They're hoping that this new stuff they've got on should do the trick. How will you know? Well, her temperature should start to go down and uh, they're going to do an x ray on her chest. When? This is done now. Fingers crossed, Sam. Right then. Enjoy yourselves. Okay, take care, eh? Thank you. All right, John. Hope to see you, girls. Bye bye. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, Hey, it's gone well, though, hasn't it? Yeah, it's all all right. So, uh, I've got to tell you, you know, it's a tea, coffee 
Honest you, Slamo, and Braz, you name it, you haven't got it, mate. Child mind, I left pen on the seat. Mm. Is this going on again tomorrow? Yep. Every day till the Education Authority take notice. I just didn't want it all happening here, that's all. Hey, hey, come here. All right. Oh, have you come for Charlie Mark, have you? Yeah. Just to the back there, look. Okay. All right, bro. So, has Jenny been behaving herself? Yeah, great. That's been a bit hectic, but well worth it, you know. It's hard to tell which ones are kids, you know what I mean? See <laughs> ya. <laughs> come on, then. Oh, he's been amusing them, has he? Yeah, yeah. All right. Thanks. Enjoy the kids. So, have you, uh, have you just got the one kid? Two. They're the ones at nursery. You look too young to have one, never mind two. Swept off my feet at an early age. Don't forget, a new broom sweeps clean. <laughs> Come on, Jenny. Oh, chill out, Ah, bro. It's not much, but it'll kick the wolf from the door. Oh, nice one. Any problems? No. Great. Right, we'll be going then. Oh, All right. Um, are you keeping Jenny off tomorrow? Yeah, I'll get her around about nine ish. Oh, right. Great. OK. See you again. See you. So, look, uh, we should do this every day till we get a result. Yeah. We'll get that school rebuilt. All right, mate. I'll see you tomorrow, eh? Yep. Bye, Jenny. Yeah! Hey, Sinbad. Where's your beloved today? No, she's, uh, she's doing a market stall today. She seemed a bit distracted the other day. What's your angle, Alice? Come on, I'm in no mood for any of your games. I'm serious. She's a complex woman, is Marcia. She's a good woman. Oh, I know. But just don't lean too heavy on her. I'm not with you. You will be. Thanks, Nurse. Thanks. Sam, just been to see the doctor. What is it? What did they say? Well, I waited for the results of the X-ray. And he reckoned the infection in her little lungs is clearing up. He also said that oxygen levels are better as well. So she's going to be all right? The doctor reckons the pneumonia is under control. Louise Francis Daniels. Hey, you're going to be fine. Going in to see Sammy and Lee's this morning, no? Are you calling me, Mr. Rogers? No, I'm calling you, Owen. Folks, is that? You going to Aussie this morning? I can't. I've got to go to West Kirby. I'm trying to close a few sales over there. I'll be in later, though. Gives you a good feeling, no? Louise has pulled through, doesn't it? Yeah, help me sleep better. So, if you're not going to the hospital, do you want me to take Sammy's card in for you? Owen? Sorry? If you're not going to the hospital, do you want me to take Sammy's card into it? No, you're all right. I can take it on myself this afternoon. I made up things are looking better on a birthday. Trials of life, oh. Not but a series of ups and downs. You know when you read all those baby books and see all those programmes on the telly? Well, it's all, like, covered in a rosy glow, isn't it? But I suppose being a dad's just the beginning. Owen, what's on your mind, mate? Well, it's just happened so quick, hasn't it? I mean, Sammy getting pregnant. Getting married, the baby. You and me, we're alike in lots of ways, you know. 
And when I got married to Chrissy, well, while she was pregnant, we struggled, got our own together. I know it didn't work out, but the thing is, I stuck with it. I was a good dad. I stood by my kids. And if you take my advice, Owen, you can do it your life, what I've done with mine. All right. Nice and early. Nice to see you as well. But I'm not sure whether Master Farnham should be breaking the van. You gonna check us out, then? Well, I am the duty manager. Seeing as I am the duty manager, make an executive decision. Uh, he'll go mad. Who will? Run! Oh, I'll explain. I'll tell him I'm doing my bit for stamping out into class rivalry, you know? Well, time to. I always thought it was a terrible science club in the window. Well done. Listen, I just fancy coming on a picnic with me and Thomas in your dinner hour. Oh, I don't really know where my dinner hour is, and anyway, I'm, I'm going to church today. Church? Yeah, it's a holy day of obligation. I'm compelled to go. Hmm, I might have liked to go. Well, we'll talk about that, can't we? Do a kettle's boiler. One minute. You having a party? No, Mick's running this keepy kids off school protest from his house against his will. And yesterday, the Ace of House and Home. So we've come prepared. House full of kids. Oh, you couldn't manage another one for about an hour, could you? If you don't mind him getting dirty, I'm getting them all out in the garden. Now nah, I'll scrub him before Patricia gets up. OK. Right, I'm off then. Right. Yeah, see ya. What, you going? Yeah, see you later. See ya. I stay then? Yeah. Oh, um, 174, please. Oh, you change? Just hang on a minute, though. Hello, love. I hear all about it. I read about it in the papers. Didn't believe a word of it. I said that lad would near to flee. Julia. I'm just going off to see what sort of stuff Jimmy Corkhill's selling. And if there's one weird, one weird set of maliciousness about you, I'll give them a piece of my mind. Thanks. Of course, you hear about all this sort of thing happening in America. What sort of thing? Well, things like your case. I mean, a man, not a very well-mannered man, if you ask me, goes missing in circumstantial circumstances, and the accused you, well, disposing of him. Got to go, Julia. All right, love, keep your chin up. I've always thought the best thing is to talk about these things. It's mm. a bit embarrassed to me, Julia. No, he'd never get embarrassed talking to me. I've known the lad on and off for years. Well, I'll best be off anyway. All right, love. Hey, and listen, don't let all the gossip about you and your priest friend bother you either. Thanks, I won't. Yeah, Bye. So. Bye, love. Any more coming? <laughs> I'm not sure. I wasn't expecting anyone else apart from Angie Lambert's daughter. At least your kids enjoy being off anyway. Yeah. I have to think about doing some work with them, though, but it's going to be a long-term thing. Just think about it, me. You've got money, work and a mortgage to think of. Yeah, I know. At least I've got Ellis in and a few of them on the camp, though. Is that sensible? I've got to do something, Mars. Anyway, like I say, it's teaching the kids now. You know, timetables, whatever. Get the encyclopedia out. I'd rather you than me. I don't mind looking after kids. Oh, that reminds me. Margaret says it all right if Thomas comes around for an hour or so. Yeah, why not? One more kid isn't going to overcrowd my new nursery, is it? Oh, are you really disappointed about all this? No. I didn't think anyone would keep their kids off. Anyway, they've probably kept them at home, you know, with this place being a bit out the way, like. Yeah. We should pick less complaining parents. Why? I just remembered one of the mothers didn't want a little precious to have the orange juice because of the additives and the E numbers. <laughs> right. I'll nip out and get some of the pure stuff in a minute. Well, that's all right, I'll go. You should stay in and greet more of the revolutionaries. Unity is strength, eh? Sinbad said it was chaos yesterday. It was. Though he was the cause of most of it, as usual. What'd you expect? Mind you, though, Moss, I think he was hiding something, you know. He seemed a bit distracted or something. No, it's you. You've got too much on your plate. Yeah, you may be right there, Moss. Fine way to spend your birthday in Aussie. 
Yeah, well, I should be coming home soon. Oh, great. I'll check with the sister, see what they've got in mind. No one should be doing all that. The lad's got a lot on his mind. Yeah, well, I wish he'd never taken that job selling on the servitries. He's got to do something. Yeah, well, it's already come between us and the birth of the baby. And he can only do short visits in the afternoon. Sam, he's feeling the weight of being a parent. I mean, you both will, but he's got to be the provider. It doesn't have to be. Now, if Owen can't get the sales and we're skint, well, then I'll just go back to work and he can look after the baby. I oh, can't do that to the man. Dad, I'm serious. Now, I'm not being stuck at home miserable because Owen can't hear. There's no problem. I'll be the breadwinner. So, is that all, then? Yes, thanks. I didn't realise you were working here. Uh, yeah, I'm just helping out for a couple of weeks, helping Ron. Oh, I see. It's, uh, one pound eight, please. Mm. No school dinners for you, then, eh? No, thank you. Uh, I always used to like school dinners myself, especially, uh, especially the puddings. <laughs> it's all changed now. Rock-hard pizza and chips. Mm. A friend of mine used to say chips are like white paint. They go with anything. <laughs> I'd better be going before I'm missed. Bye. See you, then. Oh, Hello, Barbara. Hello. All right, what are you dressed up for? Where's Corpus Christi? I thought I'd go along to Mass with you. That's if you're still going. You're going? Well, it is a holy day of obligation. I'm surprised that you're going, that's all. I thought I might start going to church again. Someone in the family's got to keep the faith alive. You, well, Ron's just phoned from the wholesalers. He's got to be delayed a bit. So why don't you go on and I'll follow you later? I mean, there's no point in us both being late, is there? All right. It'd be nice to go to church together again, won't it? Some of the children are taking their first Holy Communion today. Great. You and I can put the clock back a few years and celebrate Corpus Christi together. OK. See ya. He's alive. Well, so where is he? You tell me. He was there one minute, and then I got marched out the neck, and I haven't seen him since. Well, where on earth has he been? He's done it again, hasn't he? What? I had it all worked out. No one could touch me. Didn't matter what he said to me or what he charged me with. I had that Kent going mad. He was going round in circles. Then what happens? Up pops Barry Grant. Just in the nick of time, controlling my destiny yet once again. What happened on the beach? All the blood on the jeep and that, what happened? Just leave it, eh? It's all over. I've got my justice. Terry, I know what he did to Sue and Danny. Do you now? I suppose you know as well. Yeah. That's what I had to tell you, isn't it? That day on the beach. Terry, all this is too much for me, lad. I just want to find out what went on. Are so concerned for Barry all of a sudden. Terry, I'm carrying Barry's child, and it should be clear why Matty needs to know. When I got to the beach, I knew something was going to happen. I know him. He won't admit it, but I know him. Well, we waffled on about this and that, old times. And then he hit me with it. Sue and Danny. There and then. He did it. 
He was up to scaffolding. Said he tried to save them. An accident. Do you believe that, Terry? He let Curtis go down for it, knowing it was wrong. Then he gave me the shotgun and asked me to carry out my justice. He was right, dead easy. One little squeeze and no more. But then I thought, no, no chance. That makes it too easy for him, it finishes it. And I didn't want it like that. I want him to live with the guilt, knowing he did it. It's just too easy for him, isn't it? He can go to confession. I want him to live with the guilt. You know all about Catholic guilt, don't you, Matty? Terry. Do you know what the real twist is? I can't get rid of him. Oh, he might be squirming with guilt. But he'll be back. I know, Barry. Oh, no, love. Hello, love. I saw Marsh at the shops before, and she said we've got a house full of unruly children that might need controlling. I thought I'd offer me support to your campaign. Well, there's not that many children in, but come on, love. Oh, I'm a bit bored at ours. Everybody's out. Hiya. Oh, no, Marsha. Do you fancy a cup of? Please, love. I'm on water tablets, so I'm always parched. Mm. You've got it very nice here. Yeah, it's small, but it suits us, you know. No sign of the wife, then? And no, uh, we've agreed to disagree. Can't say that I blame you. There's no point in living out of marriage with no point, I say. Yeah, OK, um, you want to sit down, love? Yes. There you go. Uh. <laughs> so? What's this all about, then? Well, you've probably heard that they're not going to rebuild Manor Park. I blame the system. Two world wars this country's been through, and for what? I'll tell you for what, for nothing. We fought for our freedom, and what do we get? We treat pensioners like muck. But there are no pensioners in the school, though. No, but these children are the pensioners of tomorrow. She's got a point, you know, Mick. If they can't look after the young, what chance do the elderly sound? My point, Dad, exactly. Jamie keeps on trying to throw the ball over the fence. I'll tell her to behave, then. Behave? Hey, I said tell her, not shout at her. Ah. Do they miss the mum? No. They've got me around. I suppose you'll be starting your own family once you and Simba get yourselves hitched. Oh, well, I think we'll get settled together first. That's it. Then get yourself pregnant and start a family. The sooner the better, though. You don't want to waste too much time. Not at your age. Like I said, we'll get settled together first. You don't think I put my foot in it, do you? No. You don't think she's already pregnant? No. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Amen. Body of Christ. Jenny? Yeah, here you go, son. Go ahead. More fame for you, Mick. Hey? Dead short. I do the nationals. Nationals? National newspapers. I sell reports here and there. I picked up your campaign story in the local press, but I think you could do with better publicity. Seems you're sticking your neck out. Oh, nice one. Uh, yeah. Rick Johnson. Oh, would you like a drink? A uh, coffee, please. OK. Hello. Just play amongst yourselves, children. Oh, sorry. This is Julia. Brogan. I live across the close. I sort of moved to the community. 
Oh, great. Your grandson's a policeman. Well, look, guys, you want to come in and sit down, eh? Hey, kids, you want to go and play outside, eh? There you go. That's it. Right, if I can just ask Mr Johnson a few questions about the campaign. Far right away. So, from what we know, there was an arson attack on the school. You've got two children there. They don't want to rebuild. They won't rebuild. Right, won't rebuild. And your children have got a trail right across town to another school. Well, that's the upfront story. Up front? We've been talking about this, and we just feel it's negligence on behalf of the council, don't we? Um, do you want to come and help me make the coffee, Julia? Oh, no. I wouldn't miss this for the world. You were saying you didn't feel you were getting the full story. I know we're not getting it. So, what's your information, then? Look, let me put you at ease, Mick. I've been in this game for years, and every time we deal with bureaucracy, it's the same old story. You get fed a line to fob you off, and then behind your back, the real issue's being addressed. What did I tell you? It's the system. A friend of mine applied for a new hearing aid six weeks ago, and she hasn't heard a dicky bird since. I tell you what, if I can just interview Mr Johnson first, I can get a few closing comments from your good self. Oh, that's very nice of you, love. If you're being given duff info, do you think... Do you think it's got anything to do with the fact that you're black? What's the colour of my skin got to do with it? Well, looking at the piece already done on this, it seems that the Education Authority hardened their stance once you became campaign leader. Well, they had to. I hardened my stance. Yeah, but they went up a gear when you took over. That's just coincidence. Are you sure? A lot of these well-mannered people in high office often hold deeply rooted prejudices. Well, I'm sure they do, but the person acting for this Education Authority happens to be black. Is he? She. Oh, yeah. Marianne Dwyer. Used to be one of the more volatile educationalists in London. Well, I don't know that much about her. Sure. Uh, look, can I just say something here before we get sidetracked? You see, I don't want my kids going to a new school far away. I'm a single parent, and I just want the best for them. And it makes me mad to find out that the best thing that could have happened to Manor Park, as far as the authorities are concerned, was for it to get burnt down. Because then we find out that it was on the closing list anyway. So you think it may have been an inside job? No, it's just another one of those coincidences. So, where did you get the information from? Can't remember. It might have been that Mrs. Harrison from across the close, number nine. Uh, Julia. We all forget, love. <laughs> She's my next door neighbour. She's deputy head of the seniors. Harrison. Oh yeah. And she gave you this information on the quiet, did she? No, it wasn't there. Oh, I can't tell you who it was. You can trust my discretion. I'm sorry, I couldn't tell you. Well, that sort of information isn't normally given easily. So, whoever said it, will be up to their necks in it if this gets out. I didn't realise Dee Dee was going to be there. Well, I don't think she realised that you were going to be there. Derek! No word, please. In private. See you later. See you. Are you trying to embarrass me, bringing her to the church so she can flaunt herself all over you? Is anything sacred anymore? Yes. My religion and Margaret, but there's no order of priority. I've got nothing to feel ashamed about. And although, although it may upset you, you just have to accept Margaret in the same way that she's just beginning to accept my religion. Happy birthday. Yeah, I'm going to play suspended. Mm. Guess what? I can't. Hello there. Go on, guess. I'm no good at guessing. Well, guess who closed two sales today? Oh, you didn't. I did, in West Kirby. It was great. I couldn't believe it. I mean, I was a bit twitchy after the first one because the boss has been leaning on me a bit. But it was brilliant. Everything went sound. And when I got them to sound on the dotted line... Yeah, well, how much have we got? 700 quid. So, with the weather picking up, we can have that flashcard after all. Yeah, well, let's not get carried away. I mean, we need to find somewhere to live first. I just feel so good, Sam. Any Sally coming home? I'm going to see the doctor in the morning. Uh -huh. Sam, so, how do I look? Sound? I'll get this extra weight off in no time, you see. Listen, your weight is the least of our problems. The baby's getting better and the job's picking up. 
people are you happy? Well, yeah, of course. Hello, Mrs. Harrison. I'm Des Short. I do articles for the odd paper magazine. Articles? Yeah, I just wondered if you could give me a couple of minutes of your time to talk about the primary school, or the lack of it. I don't really think I'm the right person to talk about that. On the contrary, you're exactly the right person. Human interest's my angle, not just a report, but people's feelings on the matter. My feelings are irrelevant, and I didn't make the decision on that. But you did agree with the decision. I'd rather not go into that. Can I ask, did you know about the primary school's threat and closure before the fire? Well, uh... So, do you think there was a conspiracy? Well, not at all. The police have arrested a youth and charged him with arson. So you feel it was a coincidence? Well, of course it was. I think you're barking up the wrong tree. Maybe. Do you know Marianne Dwyer from the Education Authority? Yes. Is she really as abrasive as they say? I don't really know her that well. But she seems to be behind this. She does work for the Authority. And have you detected any personal involvement from her in this campaign? Personal involvement? Yeah. Do you think there's any emotional link with anyone involved in the campaign? What kind of a reporter are you? And who the hell gave you my address? Are you really at loggerheads with your neighbour over this issue? You've been talking to Mr Johnson, haven't you? Mr Johnson was much more forthcoming. Will you get out of my way, please? How much are you really involved in all this? All right, Mrs. Harrison, if you're not going to speak, I'll take it you agree with all the accusations being made against you. Keep your eyes on the papers. Should make interest in reading. So listen, uh, I'll be about 20 minutes, OK? All right, but don't forget I'm taking the cab out, so the sooner you get back, the more money we make. Right, see you later. See ya. All right, Frank. All right, Mick. Your phone's on the run. I'm just going to pick Sammy and the baby up. Oh, right, listen, how are they? Oh, great, you know. The little one, Louise Francis, after me, like. Of course. Getting stronger every day. Oh, nice one. So Sammy and Owen, they'll be getting a few sleepless nights, eh? Getting up to make the bottle and that. Well, uh, she's feeding her herself, you know. Oh, of course, yeah. I mean, there's nothing better than the old, uh, well, they feed it themselves, you know. <laughs> yeah. Better get down there, pick them up. All right, Miss. Oh, listen, uh, that woman you stole off me, how's she doing? I'll be here, Miss. <laughs> See you later. All right, Max. Hello. How's things? Oh, busy, fortunately. How's the campaign going? Oh, it's going very well. Got some national press interest now, you know. Had a bloke around yesterday. Wants to do an article about the uh, fight to reopen the school. Well, I don't want to dampen your spirits, but my experience with planners is they don't want to go back on a decision, a possible face, you know. Well, I think they may have to go back on this one. See, we're all keeping our kids off school until we see some sort of compromise. Keeping the kids off school? Oh, yeah. We'll see what they think about that, eh? See you, Max. Yeah. Oh, listen, mate. Um, tell Margaret she can bring Thomas over to our place again if she likes. Over when? No, over to our place. If she has to go out. I mean, it was no problem yesterday, so any time. Yeah. See ya. Thanks. Morning. All right. I wonder if I could have a quick word. 
Yeah, better make it quick, though. Uh, Ellis will be on me back. Oh, yes, well, it won't take long. Well, it's a bit awkward, really. It's just that... Well, Barbara came home in rather a state last night. Oh, nothing to do with me. I didn't see her last night. No, but that journalist you sent round did. Oh, no, I didn't send him round. That was Julia Brogan, your next-door neighbour. Well, how did she get involved? Just by poking that in. OK. That journalist, you know, he did get rather aggressive oh, about me. Hang on a minute, John. You know, I didn't mention anything about your wife. I could have done, but I didn't. Oh, good. She's only doing her job after well, all. Well, John, listen. Whatever the journalist said to your wife hasn't got anything to do with me. Now, if you upset her, then you should complain to the paper. But I'm in a situation here with my kids. Yes, I understand that. But you don't, though, do you? Neither you or your wife. I mean, you can just treat this as some sort of hiccup in your wife's daily routine. It's all right for you. You mean it's all right for me? Well, this situation. It doesn't really affect you, does it? I mean, your kids are all grown up now. You've got no investment in the fight. But I have. And I've got an investment in this community. You know, my kids don't go to the seniors. But if that school was under threat of closure, I'd still be out there with my banners. John, all I've ever asked for from people around here, and from your wife in particular, was some support. But like most people in this day and age, they don't want to know, unless it affects them personally. You know, I'm all right, Jack. I've told you, haven't I, eh? There's only three children allowed in that shop at any time. So when them three have made their purchases, then you can make yours. Hey, 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 hey. Are you deaf or something? Because if you are, read the sign. Aye, aye, hey. Where the hell's my no-farnum sign gone? There's an explanation. Yeah, but Dee Dee took it down, didn't she? No, actually, it was me. You? It's Maxie Farnham been in here? No, but Margaret was here. Ah, yeah, but I mean, that's different. She's with you, isn't she? Look, Ron, I don't know why you bother. I'll tell you why I bother, Daddy, because of things like that unruliness. Thanks, <laughs> Patricia, aren't unruly. But Farnham's always so smug, isn't he? He's always so cocky and confident. Well, maybe it's because you're so similar. That's why you don't get on. Similar? Me and Farnham? Hey, listen, I would sooner be called similar to Danny Rude and Maxi Farnham. Mind you. Look, I just think that some things, they aren't worth getting heated about. Oh, no. You mean, like, uh, you winding Dee Dee up about taking Margaret to church, like? Is that what she said? No, but we got it a bit that that's what it looked like. I mean, she's really upset about it. I know. I didn't mean to upset her. It was just that... Margaret decided of her own accord to come to church. Oh, don't tell me you want a grocer custard cream, a kilo of coffee and a pair of earplugs. <laughs> no, half a dozen eggs will do me, mate. You're not looking too happy there, my son. No, I'm all right. I've just had a few words with someone over something. Aye, aye. That'll either be a woman or the taxman. <laughs> it's worse than that. Must be Maxie Farnham, then. <laughs> no. ASC's off the ban list. You two uh, kiss and make up? No chance. That was the work of some do-gooder, that was, Michael. You know the type. Snitch on you if you let off in a crowd. I was merely doing my bit for community relations. Hey, it's a pity there weren't a few more like you. I thought you were getting good back enough to community over this protest. Well, I was. I suppose I still am. I don't know, it's just like it's only the first few days and they're already falling on stony ground. Falling on stony ground, see? Hey? I employ an ex-priest, what happens? All my customers start going biblical on me. I'm still getting some support, though. I mean, Angie Lambert's sticking to her gun, so that's something. Oh, that's good. Well, if there's anything I can do. Yeah, cheers, mate. I'd better be going. Have our illness on me back. See you later. Yeah. Go in peace, my son. Hiya. Hiya. Where's Leo and Gemma? I'm uh, having a lie in. A bit of late night last night. Oh, so where's the mothers and kids? Yeah, probably all doing their weekend shopping. Oh, is Mick disappointed? I think he's gutted, but you know, Mick, keep smiling. Yeah. I think he's fighting a losing battle myself. You don't beat these council decisions that easily. Yeah, but there's no point saying that to Mick. He's too stubborn. Yeah. It's all for the kids, isn't it? Have you thought about how your fiance's gonna feel about your little problem? I've thought of nothing else. You should tell him. I've just seen him across the way. I've seen him here playing with the kids. You can tell he's one of those sops that'll just drool all over the side of a cooing child. It's a hard thing to tell someone, especially someone you love. Well, then the sooner the better. The longer you leave it, the more he's going to think you've trapped him into a relationship he might have avoided. Oh, 
All right, Frank. All right, mate. Hey, like one, Sammy. Good today. You doing okay? Hi, Ben. Where is she? Had to leave the baby there. Is she still poorly? Afraid so. Hey. All right, I didn't realise. I thought you brought a little one home with you. I should be all right. I'm going to take you inside. See ya. Bye. I wonder what's wrong. Be disappointed not being able to bring your baby home. Yeah. Listen to you getting all broody. Yeah, well, I love kids, don't I? <laughs> Especially on toast. <laughs> hey, Simba. No, I'm off anywhere. Try. Yeah, sit down, Mag. I don't know how to put this, but I think you need to have a chin wag with Marcia. Why, what's up? Just ask her. Fancy a bit of toast or something, Sam? No, Tom. I want to start dieting this week. The midwife did say you gotta eat loads, didn't she? If you're gonna do that express in the milk business, I'll take it down the Aussie for you. I know, but I don't know whether I'm gonna start breastfeeding. It's not easy for me, you know. Well, I'll do whatever you want. But he did say it's best for the baby, didn't he? Yeah, well, that's easier said than done. Well, like I say, I'll do whatever you want. Well, that's the point, isn't it? I mean, you give me more support than Ellen does. <sighs> Sammy's got a lot on his mind. Now, things will settle down now that you've got some cash coming in. Well, I hope so. I mean, he's hardly visited me. I mean, I have to tell him to look at the baby sometimes, and he keeps calling the wheeze it. All blokes do that at first. Yeah, but if he'd been there at the birth, I mean, he might have felt more in with everything. Sam, I think you're making a mountain out of a molehill. I think your hormones are up to shoot. Dad, I wanted him to be there, and he wasn't. And he would have been there, only he was out trying to earn a crust for his wife and baby. Do you really think he would have wanted to be there when the baby was born? Sammy, I know he wants to be there. Look, I had a natter with him, and he was gutted. Now, you put all this behind you, otherwise it might come between you. Yeah, I suppose you're right. We need to talk. Uh-oh. Do you have a problem here? I don't know. Depends. On? How you react, what your dreams are. My dreams all revolve around you, you know that, Mars. It's now. Things could change in the next few minutes. Is it Alice? No. Then what? Look, I know how much we mean to each other, being together. And I love you so much. But if you want what most people expect from a marriage, then I'm probably the wrong person. What is he? We've been so happy together. Now I'm gonna spoil it all. I can't have kids. You can't have kids? I know it's stupid. I should have said something as soon as we started getting serious. But I just got swept away with the romance. Real romance. Not just going out with a fella, but being with someone who really loved me. Listen, uh, I've got a few things to sort out. I'll have to be on my own while I take this in. See you later. Mr. Grant, all around. I was going to ask you if you knew where he was. So you haven't seen him then? Last time I saw him was in the police station. Mm. Just a chance meeting, eh? What's this about? If Mr. Grant hadn't turned up when he did, you'd be going down for murder now. You realise that, don't you? In fact, Mr. Grant helped you get off. And me? I wasted a lot of my time. I never said I murdered him. You all assumed I had. But you could have told us that he wasn't dead. 
I could have told you a lot of things, but I didn't. So what's it all about? Barry said you simply fell out. Yeah, like little kids, we had a friendly fight. With guns? And real blood? He fell over. Don't get smart, Sullivan. You're heading for a charge of wasting police time, and that's never taken lightly. See you then. Hello. Hiya. All right. I brought you some butters for your dinner. Ham and oh, cheese? Oh, lovely. Yeah, yeah, sure. You know, I still can't get used to working in the shop. Mm. Oh, oh Ta. You know, I reckon once you put your mind to it, you'll get a job easy. Yeah. You know, he's doing a roaring trade next door. Yeah, I might have a look in there after. Listen, um, I've been thinking, I was talking to Patricia, and um, maybe it'd be nice if we could go away together. Away? Yeah, you know, after what happened last week. What? Me, me being found in your bedroom? Mm. What did Max say? I think he was more embarrassed than we were. <laughs> I bet he wasn't. Anyway, Patricia was, like, really understanding about it. She says she thinks it'd be a good idea if we had a little break away together. Yeah. Oh. Hi, hi, old fella. What's all this, then? You don't get a lunch out when you're waiting for me, you know. I've only been out two minutes. I'll be back in another three, boss. Oh, yeah. So who's minding the fort, then? Mike volunteered. Oh, not our Michael. It's Maxie Farnham, isn't it? It sure is. Wave to Daddy Thomas. Yeah. Wish I knew what was going on behind there. Right. Five minutes, old fellow. OK, boss. So, where do you fancy going on this break? I was hoping you'd come up with somewhere. Me? I only know Rome and Lourdes. Um, seaside? Well, can't be too expensive. I've got very little money. Well, I'm going to draw some money out of my savings account, so that'll help. And, um, well, if we went by coach, that'd keep the cost down. Great. Hey, I've got a better idea. Why don't we hitch? Oh, do you think it's safe? Stick with me. <laughs> I've never itched before. Well, neither have I, but I've always fancied it, you know. Just you and me on the open road. <laughs> yeah, we'll get a map out and get a few brochures and decide where we want to go. Yeah. Might be a bit risky, though, just turning up and hoping they've got spare rooms. Well, I was hoping you'd consider us being together. I wouldn't want it any other way. The point is, even if I disregard the fact that you wasted police time, neither yours nor Mr Grant's explanations are truly satisfactory. It was a little disagreement. Well, Mr Grant explained to me that he'd gone away because it was a big disagreement, and I'm more inclined to believe him. I can't do nothing about that, can I? Perhaps not. All right, it was big. How big? Big enough to make you want to kill him. Because you nearly did that, didn't you, Terry? Come on, you can tell me. Whatever he did was bad, wasn't it? It was very bad. Personal. Very personal. Just take your time. You've nothing to be afraid of. He... Go on. Something to do with your wife, isn't it? Buddy. You've got my statements. Well, I'll tell you something, Mr. Sullivan, shall I? I'm a very unhappy man. For the record, you're going to be charged with illegal possession of a firearm. Off the record, I have a little buzz in the back of my head that tells me that all this isn't just quite right. I was never happy with Graham Curtis going down for the murder of your wife and child, but now I feel I've been taken for a ride. I have a long memory, Sullivan. And one day, all this will fall in place, and when it does, I'll be back. Thanks. 
That big CID fella's been to see Terry Sullivan again. You know, it's still beyond me, all this. A man is found in my garden with a shotgun. His friend's missing. Oh, he's not anymore. That's why I've let Terry go. Oh, but where's Barry now, though? I thought you and him both. Look, I'd better get going. Thanks. Yeah, for that, though. See? You can tell she's hiding something, can't you? What, you think she's got something to do with it? I don't know. Aye, aye. Is that Maxie Farnham over there again? Yeah, I think so. You know, I'd love to know what's going on over there. Why don't you ask him? What? Lose face? No chance. Well, I better be off. Yeah, and me. Come on, Michael. Get your bum into gear. You me? Yeah, you. You can help me down the old sailors. No, I've got things to do. You've been hanging around here all day. Yeah, and I'm just on my way out. So what do you plan on doing for the rest of the summer, like? Well, this and that, you know. Well, can't you do this and that here with me in the shop? I'll pay you a proper wage. No, Dad, it's not gonna work. Only one of us can be the leader of the pack. I'm both too stubborn. Yeah, well, you're just gonna learn how to take a back seat then, aren't you, eh? Look, Michael, I need the help. Jackie Corkill's still got another week of her holidays to go, so I need somebody else. I mean, Derek isn't gonna be around all the time, are you? No. And with the state of Corkill's dump next door, somebody around here's gonna run the business properly. What's wrong with Jimmy's shop? What's wrong with it? Have you seen the state of it? Lowering the whole tone of the place, you should never have been allowed to open up. Hey, hey, Dad. You've changed your tune, haven't you? What happened to my dad, the working class hero? Hey, it wasn't so long ago you were getting all kinds of stick for the Moby and all the junk outside ours. Where does he get these ideas from? It must be that college you're going to. Dad, face it, you've become middle class, whether you like it or not. How did we get into this? Listen, we were talking about you getting a job for the holidays, right? Because you are skint. Now, we're letting you use the house as a hotel, and me, Muggins, like, I'm helping you pay off your debts. So listen, Michael, either you get your own summer job, or you come here and work in the shop with me, and I'll give you one week to make up your mind. But just think on this. No job means no help of your middle-class daddy with your debts. Comprehend? Hello? Mick? It's for you. She gets my ass. Hello? All right, boss, that's a... What? what are you talking about? Dave, you've got it all wrong there, mate. I can explain. Dave, look, just give us a chance, will you? Hold on a minute, Dave. Dave, hold on! What is it? I don't want to talk about it, Mars. to you about our idea of me and Derek having a breakaway together. Maybe we call it. Oh, good, because we were thinking of going next week. Next week? I'm not saying no, but I'm not saying yes. Why? Because all this business is getting a bit much. Max, I did say I was sorry for last week. I'm not on about last week, although I won't forget that in a hurry. I'm talking about you neglecting your duties. What are you talking about? Well, I would be very happy if you didn't dump Thomas at Mick Johnson's house. And especially when he's conducting some sort of political campaign from there. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. It was only for an hour while I went to church. Church? With Derek. Now that the crisis is over, we would very much like you to be working the way that you were before. I'm doing my best. Good. It should be easier now that you're both a normal couple. Normal? I don't want to push you. Well, maybe you and Derek would like to start thinking about finding your own place. Well, you could still work here under the terms of your normal employment. Well, think about it. That'd be best for everyone. Hey, Mick. Hey, the campaign mightn't be working, but that is this. What about me? What's the matter? You look like you've seen a ghost. Oh, you screwed me up good start this time. What? I've just been out grafting for you. Mick, what's up? He's what's up. You know, I've been there. 
I've been struggling here, trying to hold things together, trying to do the right thing. Oh, is this going to be the full lecture? Are you stupid or something? I had a phone call off the bus before, giving me a dressing down for picking up a fare outside the boundary. And I knew that it was you that was driving and not me. I told you, didn't I, not to go outside the area. Oh, no. There's bloody worse to come. Muggins here has been made the scapegoat. So I haven't got a job. I've been given a sack. And everything that I slave for, the kids, the house, everything, could all be lost because of you. Oh, Mick, I'm sorry. 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 I don't really can say that you're sorry. This is Liverpool, for God's sake. It's hard enough we try to get jobs as it is. No, I've got nothing. Sorry, mate. All right, no panic over. Mr. Clumsy, over. Well, at least you tried to give us a hand. Is that the last little tin stuff, then? Yes, boss. Now, can I go now, please? I'm supposed to be meeting Margaret. Oh, aye. And on the seventh day, he clocked off. And on the eighth day, he clocked his brother-in-law. What do you think of this, Simbad? Great having God on your side, isn't it, eh? Oh, aye, yeah. Well? Ah, go on, and off you go. But listen, while you're smooching with your loved one, try and squeeze a bit of information out of it with you about Maxie and that lot over there. Hi, Captain. So, uh, when's my next bout of slave labour start? Give over. It's not that bad, isn't it? Anyway, I'm starting our Michael on Friday for the summer. That way you're going to have a partner in crime. Oh, wonderful. Right, then. See you later, then. All right, ta-da. <laughs> so, what's your dent to that cowboy cork hill next door, lower on the tone with that wizard's den of his? Beans. Flaming bag in basements. Telling you, Sinbad, that there's definitely something wrong with that caper next door. Leaving Barry Grant's faults anyway with his Lord Lucan impressions. You listening to me, what? After you. Oh, cheers. Still, my Rackman's away, tenants don't pay. What? Well, trading them free, aren't I? No, Barry Grant. Just sees Ron. All right, love. Oh, yeah. Thanks. There you go. Must be my lucky day. <laughs> so yeah. You're right, Sinbad. All right, Alice. Have you seen Mick? We're just on our way round there. Marcia and me are going to look after the kids while he goes and sees his boss. Oh. So, the kids still on strike from school, then? It's not a strike, Ron. It's a protest. Mick knows what he's doing. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And we've got the press on our side. Look. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Not them, that. Oh, I see. Super Dad v. The State. Neighbours in school strike cash scandal. Well, I'm very impressed, Ellis, but uh, that still says strike. Uh, Ron, look, I've got to be shooting, mate. Hang on a second, I'll walk round with you. Hey, can I hang on to this? Why? Yeah, sure, I've got two copies. Why not? I've just got to grab a few things first. Yeah, well, hurry up then, please. Marcy will be waiting for me. Ah, did him. He's going to make somebody a lovely hoppy one day. Mm. Do you reckon? All right. Trouble at mill, eh? Nothing I can't handle. Oh, 
Hiya. So this is where you're hiding. All right. How's it going? Fine. I've just been knocking at your flat. I thought I'd missed you. Well, I'm just in here doing some paperwork. You're opening it up again? Pizza place? No chance. I think I'll get into something else. I'm impressed. Morning. Hiya. All right, Mars, where have you been? Well, we're just in town. Oh, look, I'm sorry. Uh, I just don't want to be late, that's all. Well, that's OK. I'm here now. Where's Sid? Um, on his way, I think. He was OK. It seemed a bit weird at the weekend. Yeah, yeah. Nothing for you to worry about. Right, well, thanks for coming at such short notice, anyway. My pleasure. You think get your job back? No, I don't, Mars. It was only one mistake. Doesn't matter. Anyway, it wasn't a mistake. And this wasn't picking up fares outside the area by accident. Yeah, it just doesn't seem right. Rules are rules, Mars. He was driving my cab without a license. So I'm finished, and it's my own stupid bloody fault. Are you going to go in the taxi? No. I might want it back there and then. I'm going to go on foot, and then on my hands and knees begging. Yeah, you never know, though, if your boss sees you face to face. Yeah, maybe. Hey, up, Mickey. Have you seen the paper? Yeah. <laughs> You're the star, look. Super dad. Just disappear, Alice. I thought you were here to babysit, not stir it. You tell me. You're the staring expert. <laughs> Great, isn't it, Mick? Look. You're a hero. Yeah. You're an employed hero. Ah, don't worry about that. We'll sort it out. Look, me and you are never going to sort anything out again. I hope you're proud of yourself. Want to know? All right, Frank. All right, Frank. OK, John. OK, Frank. Yeah, never better. Just back from the Aussie. Brought it home at last. Our little Louise. Mick, my granddaughter. You better get over there, eh? Yeah. Hey, not you. God, Dad, can't we get in here? We're going to go In a minute, Sam. I want to show my granddaughter off first. Well, I'll go and look after the kids, then. Come on, my love. Oh, there you are. Well, there you go. Hey, what do you think? Gorgeous, isn't she? Lovely. Congratulations, Frank. Hey, it was me it is all hard work. <laughs> well, it's a proud father, then. What? Oh, he's out here in the crust. Hey, he's going to have to shift some conservatives to keep this little one happy. Yeah, well, we're not going to spoil her. Well, that's easier said than done. She's beautiful, Sammy. She doesn't get it from a grandfather's side. <laughs> aye, aye. Thanks, she is, isn't she? Could be you two next. Well, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> Do you want to have a old mass? Um, no, you're right. She looks comfy there. It's a lovely name, that Louise. Yeah, Louise Francis. After a decrepit old granddad. <laughs> Got about as much hair as you, anyway, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> hey, good job I'm holding this baby. Hey, I'd take the baby back if I were you, love. Looks like he can get used to that. Don't look at me. <laughs> yeah, well, come on, I'll have to take it in anyway. Come on, Lou, let's get in. Louise, we're using a woman's name. <laughs> see you later. Bye, Bye now. Bye. Well, back to the lawnmower. All right, John, see you. Listen, man, uh, I better get on the way. Tell Alice not to be here when I get back. With pleasure. Right, see you later. See ya. See you, Mick. Lovely looking baby, wasn't she? Yeah. You better get back to the kids. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we've missed him now. I don't know. I rush back to your side after a hard morning shelf stacking and all I get's baby to Well, I wanted to see her. I bet she's lovely. We'll give him a chance to get in and settle first, eh? So we can go and see him after. Maybe. Shoot you. I just want you all to myself. <laughs> Soon, when we go for our wild weekend. Yeah, we? can't wait. Hey, have you just that way we're setting up from yet? I thought you were going to do that. Me? I don't know anything about hitchhiking. I thought you were going to sort it out. Well, think again, matey. I know less than nothing. Oh, it's not much use, is it? Looks like we're just going to have to pitch our tent at the central reservation of the M62. We'll have to find someone who knows what they're talking about. Hey, oh, Mike might have an idea. Nah, I've got a better one. What? Frank Rogers. He's a lorry driver, isn't he? He's bound to know about it. We'll go over and see him after. Hey, we might even get a look at the baby. <laughs> so, what were you saying? I was saying, oh, well, I am saying, that before last week, I felt I could tell you anything in the world. I felt really close to you. But now, well, we've hardly spoken since, have we? Sorry. Oh, don't apologise. It's not every day your future wife tells you you can't have kids, is it? 
Oh, don't joke about it, Maris. I'm not. I just wish you'd talk to me. But then again, I don't, because I'm petrified of what you might say. Well, what do you want me to say? What you feel. Whether you still want me. Of course I want you, you divvy. Even though I can't make you a dad? You're all that matters to me, aren't you? And anything else, kids and that, well, that'd just be a bonus, wouldn't it? Do you mean that? Of course I do. You're all I want. So it's June, September, then? Yeah, September. How are you feeling? A bit tired. A bit lonely sometimes. Don't tell me you're missing him. I wouldn't miss Barry if you paid me. He's hard to forget, though, isn't he? You're telling me. So, what do you want, a boy or a girl? Girl, definitely. <laughs> I don't blame you. I do. I'm stuck with the shadow of Barry Grant, and it's no-one's fault but me own. Oh, it wasn't like that. You've got to start thinking of yourself and the baby now. Yeah. I hope it doesn't take after its father. Well, it can't be that bad. I suppose not. So what are your plans, then? I don't know, really. Just to be a good mother, work hard, try and give my baby a trauma-free introduction to the world. Look, well, I'm not going anywhere, so if you ever want to give me a ring any time... Thanks. You're a good mate. Well, if there's ever anything you need... Tar. I think we'll be all right. I don't suppose I'll see any maintenance out of Barry, but she'll be able to get some kind of work. We'll survive. <laughs> Hello. Well, well, if it isn't my favourite page five girl. Shouldn't you be wearing a dirty mat gawping at that rubbish? Oh, no, no, it's not here I'm looking at. Well, there is plenty to look at. No, no, it's the story next to it I'm interested in. Really? Yeah, it's about this fellow who's keeping his kids off school and the deputy head lives opposite. What? Yeah, look. Neighbours in school strike cash candle. Could I see that, please? <laughs> Says here... Super dad, Big Johnson, blah de blah de blah. After organising a mass protest of parents, dum de dum de dum. Yeah, here. Yeah. Johnson is at loggerheads with Raven Heard, deputy head, Mrs. Barbara Harrison, aged. I never knew you were that old, Babs. Just give it to me, please. Oh dear me. Says here there's rumours it could be awesome. Looks like an inside job. What? Wasn't like this in my day, you know, love. I blame the teachers. Hey, you might have said please. There's nothing about raven haired anything in here. I know. I just stuck that bit in myself. Wasn't bad for an amateur, though, was it? <laughs> just shut up, please, Ron. Could I take this, please? Yeah, of course you can. Only uh, bring it back when you're finished, eh? Thanks. Oh, and Babs, uh, what about your bread, love? <laughs> Yet. I know I'm starving. Come here. That should keep you going till your pastry's puffed. Oh, mm, sir. <laughs> God, my bottle was going badly there before, you know. Didn't know whether I was in for the raw lord or the boot or what. Nah. Yeah, well, most fellas would have said thanks very much and waved goodbye. Do you reckon? Hmm. Oh, sorry. Leo was asking what time his dinner's going to be ready. Won't be for ages yet. Right. I'll tell him. Yeah, all well, some fellas think about us themselves. Yeah. It's a big thing, isn't it, kids? I mean, you think there's something wrong with you if you can't have them, and if you don't want them, well, that just makes you a loony, doesn't it? Yeah, but you would have wanted them, wouldn't you? Yeah, well, I didn't get much chance to think about it. I was only 21 when I found out I couldn't. Yeah, you must have been dead upset. Yeah, well, it was a long time ago. Yeah, but... But nothing. If you're happy, I'm happy. And I'll just have to settle for the patter of your little size sevens, won't I? Mm-hmm. I'm just going to go to the loo. Take it easy. You're supposed to be the guest. Well, I don't mind. Sammy needs all the help she can get. Do you fancy a cup of tea? Oh, tar. Everything okay, Sam? Yeah. 
Did she feed all right? No, she didn't take much, really. It still doesn't feel right. Yeah, but she hasn't been well, has she? I mean, bound to be a few hiccups. I'll do you a bottle, eh? Oh, no, I'll go and do it. No, you have a sit down. Put the kettle on while you're there, love. Is that working? Yeah, of course it does, yeah. Hello, ten cent for a copy, little Lou. Uh, it's Louise. And what are they doing out? Well, Denise was just sorting out the baby gear for you. Yeah, well, I was going to do that. Well, it's done now, isn't it? Oh, God, who's that? I'll go and see, eh? Hiya, come in. Oh, all right. <laughs> Hiya. Well, uh, we haven't come at a bad time, have we? No, no, no. I've just put the kettle on. Oh. How are things? Rock bottom, actually. Oh, I see. Not only have I got penny-pinching bureaucrats, striking parents and lunatic kids on my plate, but now I've got to contend with a gutter press as well. Ooh. Very nice. You're as bad as Ron Dixon. Read the story. The story our neighbourhood super dad, Mick Johnson, appears to have sold to the gutter press. Well, at least they got your age right. God knows what they say about this in school. This rag's implying there's been some sort of insurance fiddle. I'm going over there to give that man a piece of my bloody mind and find out where the hell he got his information now from. Now, hold on a minute, love. Why should I? Because there's nobody in. I saw him go off a few minutes ago and he hasn't come back yet. He's probably going to phone in his latest scoop. Come on, I'll make you some lunch. Well, what's this thing doing in bits all over the path? I'm trying to repair it so I can mow the lawn. Well, do it somewhere else. Listen, Mass. Yeah. Nearly got her. What to? Well, I hope you don't mind me asking, but... Well, you haven't really told me exactly the reason why you can't have kids and... Does it matter? Well, I don't know, I mean... It's nothing dramatic. Just block tubes. Dead common, really. Like me. Come on, mix back. Hiya. All right. How did it go? What's he still doing here? He has to be good stuff. I wanted to stay. I wanted to see what was happening with your boss. I'll tell you what's happening. Go to your room, please, kids. What's happening is I've got an hour to get that taxi back or they're going to send somebody round for it. I'm finished. That's what's happening. Well, Mick, I'm sorry. Oh, thank you. Well, you've heard the news. Goodbye. Oh, no, we, we, we've got to talk. We've got to come up with a game plan. Um, we'll get off, Amy. Yeah, well, thanks, Mars. Dear son. See you, mate. See ya. I'll see you up. So how's the shop going, then? Oh, well, Ron's a bit of a slave driver, but, you know, not as bad as your last boss, eh? <laughs> well, you, you could say that, yeah. And he's just trying to settle her again. She's gorgeous. Hey, could be you two next. <laughs> God, Frank. And I've only just given up being a father, if you know what I mean, Mr Rogers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, you want to know about it, Jakey, then? Please. Well, you've certainly come to the right fella. Hey, you want to see some of the weirdos I've picked up over the years? Punk rockers, hippies, pensioners, even. <laughs> what we wanted to know was... There was one girl, I'll never forget her. She had a wooden leg and she was coming all the way from Glasgow to Dover. And she carried this spare hand and this kit bag. You know, this foot hanging over her shoulder, like. Now, what was her name now? Debbie Diane Norris. Frank, are you going to let them get a word in edgeways or what? Oh, sorry, what do you want to know? Um, the best places to hitch from, we ain't got a clue, really. Well, it depends on where you're going, doesn't it? Yeah, well, we guessed that much. Where are you headed? Away. Just want a weekend away together. Oh, isn't that romantic? North, south, east. South? When? Um, this Friday. Is that important? Could be. Well, where do you reckon we start? You could do no worse than our doorstep. What do you mean? I'm heading south myself Friday. Oh, really? Yeah, London trip. I could drop you off at a prime spot down there. You could be on the south coast by tea time. Well, do you reckon? Yeah, no problem. Uh, officially, we're not supposed to carry passengers, but that's just the firm's rules. I mean, I know you've been having a bit of trouble trying to get some time to yourselves lately. You mm. could say that, yeah. <laughs> well, hey, consider me your guardian angel. Are you sure, Frank? Yeah. And, hey, will you by my side, Degsy lad? I won't need me St. Christopher, will I? <laughs> <laughs> Have you 
uh, calm down a bit yet. Oh, yeah, I'm calm. Well, you've got to be when you're driving, haven't you? Hey? Well, a taxi. Got to take it back, haven't I? Right. So, uh, you might as well go. No reason to hang around, is he? Yeah, yeah, but I want to. <laughs> what you want to do is, uh, no concern of mine. Oh, look, Mick, I've said I'm sorry. Mom, oh, what... no. I heard. So you leave my house now? Gone out. You're trespassing. Oh, come on, mate. Let's, we can sort this. <laughs> I'm not joking, Ellis. Just go. What about the kids? I could look after them for you. No, I think I'll take them with me. You see, they love sitting in the back of that taxi. And then they can watch while their dad hands it over to his ex-boss. And then we'll get a bus home, if I can afford the fare. Oh, look, I've got some money. I'd rather walk. Please. Please what? Me and you are finished. I don't want to see your face ever again. Now, why don't you just take it out of my face? Would that make you feel any better? I wouldn't waste the energy. Oh, now, come on, mate. I don't want to hear it. You know where the door is. But you're my brother. Ex-brother. I'll take Marcy's advice. Disappear. Take care. Hello, John. You're a dead man, Dixon. Could be, mate. All depends on what they're building over there. Or what my lovely wife decides to do with you. Seen the paper, then, have you? <laughs> could hardly miss it, could I? Yes, it was hurtling towards my skull. Sorry about that, dude. I've snaked out. Left a seething over the soup. Oh, dear. Do we have to have all those page three jokes? Funny, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> right, then. There's me address. Well, haven't you got a number? No, I'm not on the phone. I can't afford the bills. Well, do you want me to walk you down to the bus stop, then? No, honest, Terry, I'm OK. Nice, well, look after yourself, then, eh? I better add, no one else will. Oh, don't be soft. You're lovely, aren't you? You're bound to meet another fella. I think I'm off fellas permanently. Well, they're not all like Paddy Grant, are they? At least that's the last time I'll have to hear his name. Hopefully, but he has a nasty habit of sneaking up behind you when you least expect it. Don't we know it? Look, I want you to have this. No, Terry. Look, go on, take it. Buy the baby some. I mean, if that murderer's not going to help you, well, let me. No, Terry, thank you, but I've, I've got to do it on my own. I know if I'm ever in real trouble, you're here for me, OK? Yeah, OK. You'd make a ten times better father than Barry Grant ever could. See you, Terry. There we go. Let's get the door. Hey, are, babe. And Lee, put your sister's seatbelt on, all right? OK. That's it. Excuse me, Mr Johnson. Yes, Mrs. Harrison. Have you read this? Yeah. And? And what? I think I'm entitled to know where you got your information from. Like I'm entitled to know what's happening to my kid's school. That's not the point. This excuse of a story is full of half-truths and downright lies. Did you put the idea of arson into their heads? No, I didn't. And nobody's trying to swindle the children out of a school. Aren't they? Look, I have a right to know your sources. Sorry, no can do. You might think it's very clever, selling yourself as some kind of hero, Mr Johnson. But I've got a whole school full of children to worry about. This garbage could cause all sorts of problems. Really? I just hope it was worth whatever they paid you and your informant. Now, hang on a minute. I didn't get a penny for any of that, and neither did my informant. Well, how long do you expect to keep up this charade? I mean, how many more column inches do you hope to fill? This charade is about my children's future. And I will keep it up for as long as it takes. I mean, it's not like I've got anything to lose, is it? 
That's right, you just go off on your day trip. Leave everyone else to clear up the mess. Day trip? You want to know where I'm going, miss? I'm taking this taxi back to its owner because I've lost my job. And I don't know if this time next week there'll be enough food in the fridge for these two. So you and your newspaper are the least of my worries. It looks that way. Is um, everything OK with the baby? Oh, yes, yeah, sound, yeah. A bit noisy, like. Just come off with a bit of peace and quiet, you know. I don't blame you. Never thought I'd like, be into all that lark again. No? Eh, uh, Mick, he's probably having a cab, you know. I don't think so. It's all right. I'll just wait. Yeah, sure. Anyway, see ya. You're not working today, again? No, not today. All right. I didn't expect to see you here. Yeah. Thank you. We're not a Cheers, anyway. Well, have a good day off. Thanks. See ya. Is there any chance of a biscuit with this cup of tea? Uh, got a bit busy. Uh, Margaret kindly offered to brew up. Any chance of an autograph? Sorry? Well, you're famous now, aren't you? Name in the paper and all that. Oh, well, you saw the story then, yeah? Oh, aye. It's not every day we have a super dad in our midst. How about super granddad? Oh, grandma. <laughs> Mick, your kids are fat on your doorstep waiting for you. Is he? Oh, he'll have to make an appointment now, like everyone else, won't he? Yeah, that's right. And uh, what about this dusky beauty? Hey? We said in the paper you teamed up with a dusky beauty armed with inside information. I've not read that. Oh, well, get it if you like. So, are uh, you carrying on with the strike then, Mick? Yeah. And it's a protest, not a strike. Why? Oh, nothing. I was just asking, you know. Yeah. School strike, super dead, secret committee connection. Dusky beauty. Is this today's paper? Us off the presses. I thought you meant Mondays. Oh, no. Um, aren't you following the story? Mick, looks like you get a series out of it. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Look, uh, I'll just have a browse around the shop if it's all right with you, Jackie. Oh, always room for a star. What, make your house? Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. Fame. Goes to your head, doesn't it? <laughs> Hi, Dee. Right, sir. Uh, this'll do for now. Hey, you don't be buying a bread, then, eh? You know, it's dead dodgy. You all right, Margaret? <laughs> Yeah, great. So, uh, what are you after, then? Uh, nothing really, yeah. Uh, just getting away from the whiff of dirty nappies for a few minutes. Yeah, this'll do. Um, that's, uh, one forty-five, please. You go. Thank you. All set for Friday, then? Oh, yeah, I can't wait. Friday? Yeah, I'm running the Love Bears down to the smoke in my wagon. London? And then on to Brighton, probably, for the weekend. I see. 
So listen, if you prepare the sarnies for the journey, cheese and onion is fine by me. <laughs> See ya. Bye. Do you mind if I just nip to your leg? Oh, help yourself. It's you that making me laugh. <laughs> See you soon. See you soon. Bond's paying you to stack shells, not whisper sweet nothings. Yes, yeah, Steve. Anyway, what's she doing hanging around here? Hasn't she got a nannying job? She happens to have a name, and it's a day off. I'm going to sneak off on some sordid outing way. We... look, we're going away just like any other couple who happen to be in love. Shh, you don't know the meaning of the word. Um, it's not all Mills and Boone, you know. Look, I'm sorry, dear, I just didn't realise that I had to report my every movement back to you. Oh, no, you just please yourself. Don't mind me. Do what you want. In fact, if you need the loan of a double bed... I mean, Ron and I could sleep on the floor here or something. Sorry about that, Matty. No bother, son. Never come between a man and his razor. Hey, fancy some breakfast? It's near dinner time. You all right, then? Yeah, yeah. I came round to see how you are, really. Oh, sound. Any news on the job front? Oh, haven't you heard? Howard Candle's retired and I'm taking over. <laughs> Cracker. Any chance of a game? <laughs> how about you, then? Any news? I'm just trundling along, you know. Hey, I had a visitor the other day, you know. Barry. No. Fran. Oh. She all right? Oh, she's doing all right. She's getting by. She's seen Barry. I think he's the last person in the world she wants to see. Yeah, I suppose so. She said to say hello to you. Yeah. Next time she's in touch, tell her I was thinking about her. Matty, I don't think there is going to be a next time. Why not? Well, she said she was getting off and it's going to be for good. I'm sorry. It's OK. It's none of my business anyway, is it? Except we both know it is. So where's she gone? I don't know. Uh, well, she wouldn't give me a new address. Well, you know, in case Barry got hold of it. But she's going to keep in touch, isn't she? Your guess is as good as mine. I've been nosing round Jimmy Corkle's glorified 50p shop. It's just about my range these days, excuse me. Where are the kids? Master's taking them off for the day. Is there, um, anything I can do? You know what you can do. Oh, come on, mate. Look, what are you on? Look, there you are. Look. I'm on my knees. Crawling to you. I want to go inside now and look down the back of the couch for some loose chains. See if I can afford to buy an echo and chase up a job, you know. Yeah. How's business? Oh, not bad at all, thanks. You working hard? Harder than Jimmy. <laughs> He's out checking on new lines. He left you holding the fort. Yeah, what a way to spend your holidays, eh? Cooped up in Aladdin's cave. God, look at that. I haven't seen one of them since I was a kid. <laughs> no. You up too much today? Nah, just doing a bit of decorating up in the flat. Oh, very nice. How's it looking? It's all right. Does not make a difference to a place of liquor paint. More like your own home, then, isn't it? Yeah. And how's Marcia? She's fine, she's great, yeah. Fixed a date for the wedding, yes? It's early days yet. Everything is all right, isn't it? Uh... So, he hasn't gone bankrupt yet, then? Oh, hello, Julia. My God, the state of this place. Yeah. Harrods eat your heart out. I bet it's taken a few swag bags to stock these shelves. Sorry, Julia. Are you after something in particular? Oh, I don't really know, love. It's a bit down market for my taste. Oh, well, if it's not good enough for you. No, I never said that. I'll have a root. My mother always said I had an eye for a bargain. And anyway, I'd rather come in here than go next door and put good money in that Ron Dixon's till. All contributions gratefully received. Mm -hmm. With a bit of luck, the building has to opposite. 
That'll wipe the smile off his face. And mine. I work there, remember? You're better off here where you are, love. I see he's got a brother, the fallen priest, working there now. The place will probably get struck down by a thunderbolt. Well, I'd better be getting off then, Jack. Don't go yet. Um, keep nose and you might find something you like. Uh, yeah, I will do then, yeah. OK. I honestly don't know. Of course not. And even if you did, you wouldn't bother to tell your favourite dusky beauty about it, would you? That article had nothing to do with me, honestly. Ever heard of guilty by association, Mr Johnson? Do you want to come inside? <sighs> I really am sorry. You're not the only one. Sit down. Please. You know, I may have mentioned your name to someone, but I didn't think it was going to come to what? It's obvious you didn't think. Don't you understand how these people work? A black man in cahoots with the only black woman on an education committee. Well, it's obvious what's going on, isn't it? A lovely little romantic conspiracy. <sighs> They're ruthless, aren't they? That's their job. And you're very naive if you thought otherwise. I'm just doing my best. You've got to call a halt to the protest. You're treading on too many toes. No, I can't. I'm sorry if I've caused you trouble, but that's no reason to stop fighting. This is important. Yeah, you have caused me trouble. I'll get fried over this lot. Look, I'm not talking about my welfare. I can stick up for myself. So can I. Yeah, but wheels are in motion. Look, buck the system and it starts working against you. What do you mean? You're due a call from the Education Welfare Officer. So? So? I'll just be straight with them. Tell them what I told you. But you're the only parent left on this crusade. They see you as the problem. These people have got real power. What sort of power? You're a one-parent family. You're depriving your children of their education. If you don't give in, they could make life for you and the kids very difficult. <laughs> You should see me when I really get it, Mr. Hyde. Ta-ra, love. Ta-ra, Julia. <laughs> Thought she was going to buy this show. <laughs> so, where were we? Well, you had me walking up the aisle, didn't you? Oh, were you being dragged? No, not at all. There's nothing I want more than to be married to Marcia. Yeah? Boss? Do you think kids are important? In what way? You know, when you get married and that. Well, they didn't make much difference to me. <laughs> we still broke up. Marcia can't have any. Oh. You can have mine if you want. <laughs> no, thanks. When did you find out? Oh, years ago. Before I ever knew her. And how important do you think they are? Very. So I was looking forward to becoming a dad, you know. I wanted to be there when she found out she was pregnant, faint at the birth, hand out cigars and all that. <laughs> just wanted to see my kids grow up and make something of themselves. It's not a barrel of laughs, you know. It's a nightmare for some people. Yeah, but you've got to be in it to win it, though, haven't you? What about Marcia? Do kids mean more to you than she does? No. She's not one I proposed to her. I thought that was all part of it. You know, the two of us dreaming about our own little family. Did you tell her that? No. I just thought that she'd be thinking the same thing. Well, she probably wishes she could. But none of it's their fault, is it? No, no, I suppose not. You could still have kids if you wanted. Oh, no. Not with someone else. Well, imagine how Marcy must feel knowing she never can. Yeah, yeah, you're right. 
And anyway, if someone had told you 12 months ago that you'd be engaged to a lovely girl like that, I don't think we'd have heard too many complaints, do you? I don't think I'd have believed them. So just make the most of what you've got. I don't think you realise how lucky you are. I do, honest. I'll show Marcy you do. Talk to her about it. See what she thinks. Problem shared and all that. Yeah. Yeah, I will. Thanks, Jack. The bill's in the post. <laughs> See ya. Try, love. Thanks for the tea. All right. You're welcome. I'd better go. I've got a meeting. OK, uh, I'll see you out. I'd prefer it if you just saw sense. Look, I'm sorry, but it's the principle of the thing. Are you sure you haven't started to believe your own publicity? Uh, I'm not interested in the papers. Just Leo and Gemma. And Superdad, of course. No, no. No way. At least think about what I said. These people don't mess about. Listen, um... I don't suppose there's anyone you could talk to for us, is it? I've said far too much as it is. OK. Well, um, you keep me informed. I'm sorry. Just being here compromises my position. I'm afraid you're on your own. Bye. Bye. Here's the midwife. All oh, right, I better get ready to have another go then, eh? Right, um, I think the oil mechanic is changing. Hiya, come in. Here you go. Hello. Hello. Um, right, well, I'll put the kettle on then, shall I? Yeah? Hiya, some mad. Could I come in? I'm busy. Please. Look, I'm decorating. What do you want? A word. Here's one. Goodbye. I'm serious. Me too. Please, Simbad, can I come in? Why should I let you in when your own brother won't let you into his house? Because it's my own brother I'm here to speak about. What about him? I'll be mooching around here all morning wondering what to do. I need your help. You need my help? To get through to Mick for me. Why should I help you? Oh, do you like seeing your mates cut themselves off from their real family? Because that's what he's doing. Depends what the family's like, doesn't it? Well, this one just wants to sort things out before it all goes too far. You're a case you, aren't you? Isn't losing Mickey's cab far enough? Well, it's just unlucky. More unlucky for some than others, wasn't he? I'm not asking for a lecture, just a favour. Is that all? You know what you are, don't you? You're a user. You think you can stroll in here, but you're breaking up the family tale. And I'll skip along to Mick and talk him round. Well, you're not using me like that. You might think I'm thick, but I'm not that thick. Shall I take that as a no, then? What do you think? OK, thanks very much. See ya. Bye. How did it go, then? What did she say? It was terrible. She said I wasn't feeding her properly. Well, you pick it up as you go along, don't you? Yeah, but even when she showed me, I couldn't do it. And it hurt and all. Well, we'll have to give her a bottle, then. No, I don't want to chop and change. It's got to be one or the other. And Denise was wrong the other day, giving her a bottle. Well, she was only trying to help. Yeah, well, no-one can help, can they? I mean, no-one else can feed her. I'm the only one who's going through this. Go on. Go up to her. I've got to get all my stuff ready for work. I'm sure you can spare a minute and see if she's all right. Well, go on a minute. <sighs> what? Just forget about work for a minute, will you? Are you serious? Yeah. It's all you'd ever think about. Think about your wife and baby for a change. She's upset out there. I'm upset now. I can't win, can I? I just think you could give it a bit more support, that's all. Well, I'll pack my job in, shall I? And uh, become a house husband and we'd all have to live on Monopoly money. Well, I keep it down. You're being sarky now. Well, what you'd expect? I mean, if I wasn't working, you'd be on me back to get on me bike, wouldn't you? No, I wouldn't. Of course you would. 
I can't do right for wrong, can I? I work all the hours God sends to support me family, and then I'm told I'm not supportive enough. Are oh, you twisting it now? Well, the pair of you just shut up and give us a break. I'm sick of this. Do you know what the midwife said to me? She said I've got to relax mentally to get this right, not be driven mad by you two bickering all the time. Now, just leave us alone. It's a pity you never made a go at this place, you know. Well, my heart wasn't really into it, was it? Oh, neither was your back. It was me and Paul Owen that did all the grafting. I was only funny half hour, wasn't I? What are you going to do with it? I don't know. The world's me lobster, isn't it? Could have been a real goer, you know. All right. All right, how's it going? Uh, could be better. What about you? Sam, thanks. He's just mapping out his future as the next Robert Maxwell. Well, I thought he put on a bit of weight. So what's the master plan, then? I don't know. Just looking at this place. I'll get rid of all the pizza gear and get into something else. Well, I just think it's a waste, that's all. What? There's no way you could... No, nah, I'm much better off cutting my losses. <sighs> this place can make a profit in the long run. Maybe, but there's nothing I can do about that now. You reckon? It's a millstone round me neck. Not even if you got someone in to run the place for you? It's a bit late for that. Why? Because I don't want to go through all that again, seeing people, interviews. But what if you already knew who you were hiring? That won't work. I've already tried it. And do you know someone? Yeah. You're looking at it. Well, half of him. Me and our Mick could run it. Mick? Well, what about the cab? Ah, oh, no, no, he's had enough of that. He's looking for a new start, and this will be perfect. Hey, it sounds promising, son. Now, my mind's already made up. Why? Because he never clicked the first time round. Nah, we'd make it work. What do you know about pizzas? Me? Nothing. But Mick does. He was in catering for years. I don't know. What have you got to lose by giving us a chance? Well, what? That's not the point. The point is that we could turn this place into the busiest pizza parlour in town, and you could sit back just raking in the profits like, like a real tycoon. Hey, what have you got to lose, Telly? I really don't know. Wait, hang on. A month. Give us four weeks to see what we can do. We'll have this place buzzing. If we don't, we'll give you back the keys. A month? A month. All right, on one condition. Name it. That you give Matty his job back. <laughs> That's fine by me. That's if Matty wants his job back. I'd love it. So it's a deal, then? <sighs> yeah. Oh, magic! There you go. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Oh, is Ron not back yet? No, he, he phoned earlier, though. He's going to be another couple of hours in the Moby. Oh, I wanted to see him about something. Yeah, so did I. I was going to ask him for my wages early. Really? Yeah, I'm going to treat myself to a new shirt. Be a little trip away. I may wear it at the weekend, I may not. What, you don't get lipstick on your collar? You're not in the least bit funny, Dee. I'm not trying to be. Fine. So, do I have your permission to take my wages out of the till? Uh, service check them first, though. Uh, 140, please. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Bye. So, how much do we owe you? 55. Pounds? Oh, I can't take that much out. You'll have to wait for Ron. Come on, dear, please. Well, there's only about 70 in there. Oh, come on, this is ridiculous. Don't you believe me? No. You really are unbelievable, you know? Do you want me to count it? Don't bother. Anyway, now you're here, you can take over. I've got things to do. Derek, don't go. I'm not going to stay around here to be wound up by you. No, I mean, don't go on this weekend. Not with her. What? Please. Why? It's not right. Please. Listen to yourself, Dee. First it's digs and insults, and now you're pleading with me. That's not right. Oh, I'm sorry, it's just... I'm pig-sick of the lot of it. I love Margaret. We're a couple. We, we do what we want, we go where we want. We are going away this weekend. Accept it, cos it's happening. You can't accept it when I'm afraid that's your problem, cos I am that far from just washing my hands of you completely. 